Hi guys, I'm Harley from Vapemill. Today we're reviewing the Biden pod system by Geek Vape. It's the first ever dual coil pod system. And if you stay tuned at the end of the video, I'm going to show you how we can re-wick this little beast. Even though it's not designed to be re-wicked. Cheers guys! A massive thank you to EC Click for sending me the Biden and the purpose of the review. I reviewed it, I've done my best. So thank you guys. Head over to easyclick.co.uk, links in the description. There's also a more in detail written review down there as well on Easy Click. This little beast is 17.5 by 32 by 88.5 mil. It weighs in at 68 grams, 958 milliamp battery. It has a 3.5 mil tank or 2 mil TPD. It handles 0.5 to 3 ohms. It has three different power settings. It has 3.4, 3.6, or 3.8 volts. It's got the micro AS chipset, which if you're not a stranger to Geek Vape, you've probably had a micro AS chipset before. And even better, to make me happy, it's got the USB C charger. As I've previously said, it rocks dual coils. It's got variable voltage. It's got a very prominent LED indicator. 10 second cut off protection, temperature protection, low voltage protection, does pass through charging, and goes to, automatically goes to sleep after 15, sec uh, 15 minutes of not being used. And it comes in six different colors. Free of resin, free R carbon fiber. So let's get on with the unboxing. The Biden's just arrived and I'm gonna waste no time opening it. Very standard Geek, bo uh, geek Vape boxing. Got a spare pod there, got a pod inside. Charger. And manual. Not too thick, not too thin. We've also got a little bit in here. Morning, Biden. A bit of advertising there. I imagine that's your warranty. So, here we go. Fill it up. It's very rare to see that. I don't know if it'll focus. No, nope, maybe not. This is prime the coil for three minutes before use. You should always do that, but it's very rare to see it. We fill the coil here. I've got some Got Salt Blood Sun, which is blood orange and grapefruit. 20 milligram Nick Salt. Pull the bung back in. I'm not a massive fan of that. There you go, three minutes to prime, and it's time to play. Now for me, this device is ace. Uh, it's got, the LED indicator tells you so much. It's really bright as well, the LED indicator. Even in broad daylight, you can still see the LED indicator quite well, which I find is not true for a lot of devices. As you can see on the unboxing, it comes with a 1.2 pod and a 0.8 pod. I prefer the 0.8 pod. Using either VG or P5050. But both pods handle both liquids quite well. So using high VG at 1.2 doesn't really give you much vapor or flavor. But that's to be expected, you know, you're using really thick liquid at a really low setting on a pod that's not really designed for high VG. Dry heat protection, you know, I hadn't really had that many dry hits. I think I got a few dry hits using VG mouth to, uh, direct to lung on the 1.2 pod. But other than that, it's handled it quite well. Now, one thing I will say is the pod says it's designed for mouth lung and direct lung. Now, it does handle quite a lot of vapour for both. But for mouth lung, I don't think there's a, quite a... It's not a very restrictive draw. 
even over 1.2 you can handle a direct lung which obviously means it's not that tight but both pods there's not a lot of airflow between the pods the 0.8 is looser making the 1.2 more restrictive than the 0.8 but there really isn't a lot between them As you can see that's the difference between direct to lung mouth to lung. But you can do both quite well. When they've said it's mouth to lung or direct to lung, it's because they put the airflow air between. The, 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 like I said, there isn't a massive difference in the pods. And I don't think it's necessarily designed for that either. I think we've literally just gone for a one airflow fits all. For a more in depth detail of the coils, how they perform with what liquids, bang out to easy click, the link will be below. You'll be able to find my rating review which is much more detail about the hits from the pod. So something that quite confused me a little bit, this little device handles a one amp charge rating. So it's got a nine, 950 milliamp hour battery. One amp, you're gonna say that's gonna take just under an hour without any energy loss. Energy loss does exist, so you're looking at about an hour, an hour five, an hour 10. But this little beast advertises charging 45 minutes. Being very sceptical, I watched it very carefully and I checked at 40 minutes it weren't charged, I checked at 50 minutes and it were charged. Quite impressive, so I did it again and, and granted, within 45 minutes, give or take, two, two minutes, it were charged. So, bang on, crack on, we keep it, well done. Coil life, pod life, I've been using this constantly, at high VG, uh, 3.8 volts, I an 0.8 pod. It lasted about five days and then it started getting a bit more dry hits and whatnot. So I started to use it a bit less rather than constantly hitting it, taking 10 consecutive drags. And yeah, it is still going after a week, so crack on for that. But 1.2 pod, I used it predominantly with 50 50 liquid over than testing. And after a week, it's still cracking on nicely. So there you go, guys. I don't think it's got a short life, um, anything less than a week short. But I think I've pushed it a bit far. I, I would still expect the coils to last at least a week and a half when I'm to two weeks. But obviously I ain't used it that long yet. Eat for, I ain't got time for both pods. So outside I can't actually say that. But yeah, a week for each pod and we're still going. Right, so we're going to recoil and re-wick the Biden. I want to express that they're not designed to be rebuilt. So what you're doing now is you're hacking. And that's fine, it works. There's low resistance protection, so it shouldn't be wrong for you. But if you follow what, I've, what I said in the video, you should be perfectly fine. Just remember, the negative terminal is through the center to the gold pin, and the positive terminal is outside on the silver rim. It does work. When you're priming your coils, don't do it inside the pod because it will melt the outer circle, what holds the pod together and stops it from leaking. Make sure your coils are nice and centre, not too close to the metal, not too high, and definitely not too low. If it's too low, your wick's going to go up and down, and you don't want that. You just want it to drop, drop out nice, nicely. Good luck, guys. I hope this helps. Can I say? Enjoy. And don't forget, guys, stay cloudy. Right, guys, I'm going to re-wick the 1.2 coil. I need to stress to you that the pods aren't designed for being re-wicked. So it's not straightforward and probably not very safe. However, the pod does handle low ohms. So it shouldn't be too unsafe, it shouldn't blow up on you, yada yada. First thing we need to do is get the base of the pod out. A lot of people have said that it's not possible without breaking it. However, it is. If you get your screwdriver down the edge, see what a lot of people have done to get in is going from the side. If you can see, I'm not going in from the side. Where the nodges are, there's a little knot in the top. Going from the bottom, and you can remove the coils. Just go the top cap for a second because you don't need it. As you can see, you've got two coils here. You've got one on this side, one on that side. And they connect like most sub ohm coils do. They connect into the bottom of the terminals. So the next thing we need to do 
is remove a gold pin. Then remove a rubber. Make sure you do not lose either of them pieces. And then remove a gold pin. Okay, remove that. As you can see, here are the coils, part of the coils. They were held in place by the rubber row and the outer terminal piece. Turn it over and now your coils should quite easily just slip out. We're going to give the better quick drying, just to make it easier to work with. Oh, you probably should anyway. You probably can't see it on my camera because it's not that good quality there. You've got four holes. You've got one up here in this corner, and you've got one here, and you've got one here, and you've got one here. This is where the coils go in. So the one at this side goes in that way, the one at the top goes in that way. Right, so I've rebuilt the coils and put them on my Wizmec with a drop tank to test them. Uh, they're in at 1.2 ohms, so I've got it perfectly right to the tank. They, um, I've used 28 gauge coil and I've used 5 wraps or 6 if you look from the top. And like I say, it's quite bang on. So now, now that they're all ready, I'm going to take them off, put them back in the pod. I'll put them in the pod and see how we get on. Don't forget guys, a few warnings here. You can't burn the coils in the actual pod because it melts the it melts the surround and then it won't fit properly. So make sure if you're priming your coils or anything, do it off, do it elsewhere, do the testing elsewhere, because you can't do it on the system. I should also mention that I've used these at 15mm diameter or 15mm jigs. Right, so as I said a minute ago, you want the first coil through the hole in the middle, which is quite hard to see. It is a little bit like threading a needle. It's Feels are very small, but they're supposed to be. So this coil here is going at this side in the middle and in the back left corner. The next coil in the back, which that's in, no it's not. So you again side center. In the back as well. Now my coils aren't even for good experience, you want your coils even, but as you can see they are now in. Right, once you've got the coils in and you're happy with them, the first thing you need to do is put the oil back on. You can put that back on before you put the coils in. Next you need to bend the coil legs in, to the next part easier. Whatever you're messing with the coil legs, you don't want to skew the coils. Bang the top cap on, making sure all four legs go in, like so. Now we need to re-separate those coil legs. Yeah, again, we are skewing them. It's quite important that you make sure you've got one of each coil. So, as we look here, this coil's going that way, and we've got the legs that way. The next thing you need is you need two legs through this rubber row. 
and clamp the rubber down. Making sure two legs stay at one side, the other two legs stay at the other side. This is quite important because this is where your terminal sit. This is your terminal. So if you don't get this bit right, your atomizer won't work and it'll short circuit. Once you got that done, pull your other legs to the other side and then bang your centre pin back in. Bang, done. The next thing to do is make sure his coils are alright still. You want them in line with the bottom of a hole. You can see that. Well, I'll do it, you'll see what I mean. If it's any lower, you won't be able to wick it properly. It can be a slight bit higher. And that's both of mine done. It can be a slight bit higher. What you do want is them to be as more centre as possible. It is extremely fiddly. The next part is need to put some cotton in. Just like anything else, because they're really small, you need to get a really small piece of cotton. And I mean like ultra small. Where you manage to get the cotton in, get a quick trim. And next, we need to bang the cap back on. Perfect, now let's get it go. There you go guys, if you need a proof, there it is. The Biden pod is rebuildable. Thanks for watching guys, stay cloudy.